For many users, there is often some confusion understanding exactly what Acrobat and Reader do, or can do. What's the difference? And this is especially true when you mix in Reader extensions, or Reader writes. And even more now, because of the special attributes of Acrobat 11. This video will make clear exactly what each of these things are, or at least as well as it can be understood since they do tend to change from version to version. To be clear, Adobe has two desktop tools for PDF. They are called Acrobat and Adobe Reader. I often hear two very common mistakes people make when referring to these tools. Number one, Acrobat is not Writer or Adobe Writer. It's named Acrobat. I often think Adobe would have been doing themselves a big favor if they would have just named it Writer, but they didn't, so the tool is called Acrobat. But the most common thing I hear is both Adobe Reader and Acrobat being referred to as just Adobe. I know this sounds like nitpicking, but if we want to communicate clearly about a technical issue, then it is very important to use the correct names for things. Adobe Reader can be shortened to Reader when we know that we are talking about PDF and specifically the Adobe product. But it is never Adobe by itself. And Acrobat is certainly never called Adobe. The two names are Acrobat and Adobe Reader. Now that we're clear on the nomenclature, let's take a closer look at what these applications actually do. Acrobat and Adobe Reader are Adobe's desktop tools for working with PDF files. There are other Adobe tools that operate on PDF files, but these are the two tools that users interact with on the desktop. Adobe Reader is a free end-user tool, primarily and traditionally it's for viewing PDFs, but you could also say that it's for using PDFs. Since it's free, everyone with a computer has the ability to view and use PDFs. By using the PDF, I mean interacting with the PDF in a way that changes it for some useful purpose, such as filling in and submitting forms, or signing documents, or commenting and annotating documents. These are exactly the same types of things that you do to use a paper document. Reader provides the equivalent functionality for PDF documents. And remember, Reader is free for everyone. On the other side of the equation is Acrobat, which is not free. This is because Acrobat is the tool that you use to create PDFs. I also like to say that Acrobat is a document finishing tool because you use it to prepare documents for distribution. It is also a workflow tool because it provides capabilities that help you to move documents through a process. Acrobat provides functions for analyzing, manipulating, and optimizing the content inside of a PDF. It also has options for adding all kinds of features to a PDF, such as form fields and scripts, which is really what we're interested in in this video series, but also bookmarks and other navigation and accessibility features, things like watermarks and page numbers, as well as a huge number of other document preparation and processing features. So, Reader allows users to view and use documents, whereas Acrobat is for creating and preparing and processing documents. Just to be clear, while Acrobat creates PDF files, it is not a tool for creating document content. Content is created in a content creation tool, such as Microsoft Word or Adobe InDesign. These are document design tools. Acrobat is the tool you use to prepare the document for distribution. First, by converting the creation format into a PDF, and then adding form fields, navigation, and other usability features to it. Acrobat is also the tool you use to manipulate documents in a workflow. For example, you'd use Acrobat for splitting out pages and then merging them into some other document, or pre-filling form data, or extracting data for use in some other tool. There are all sorts of ways in which Acrobat can be used to process documents and the information those documents contain. There are two separate Acrobat variations, the full or professional version and the standard version. As the name implies, the standard version includes a standard set of features for converting other formats into PDF and for adding usability features such as form fields and scripts. The professional version includes all of these features as well as a set of advanced features. 
The advanced features are mostly workflow tools, such as the form distribution and collection wizard, the document review tools, and the batch processing tools, as well as a set of print production tools and some other advanced features that just aren't available in standard. However, with every version of Acrobat, one or more advanced features are put into standard. The latest version of Acrobat 11, in fact, contains some are part of the workflow features I just mentioned, such as the forms distribution and the document review tools. The difference between professional and standard is smaller now than it has ever been before. Let's talk about reader. There is an old saying among old PDF professionals, it's a reader, not a writer. We used to say this because people were always complaining that they couldn't save their PDF files with Reader. We don't say it anymore because, as you'll see, it's not as true as it used to be. Back before Acrobat 11, there were a set of usability restrictions in Reader. For example, you could not save or submit a filled PDF form. You could not sign a document. You could not add comments to a document. You could not spawn a new page. Spawning is a dynamic feature for creating new pages. I'll be covering it in the how-to videos later in this series. And finally, you cannot add file attachments to a PDF in Reader. There are also several other restrictions, but these are the main ones. It is very important to enumerate these because each one of these restrictions can be lifted by applying a special extension or write to the PDF. There is a special extension or write for each specific restriction. Think of the write as a special sauce that is put on the PDF. When that PDF is loaded into Reader, a user can now perform that previously restricted action. Remember, a write is something that is applied to the PDF. It's something that is put into the PDF. For example, if form save rights are applied to a PDF form, then Reader can save or submit that form after the user has filled it out. The way this works is that the write or extension is really a digital certificate. If the digital certificate is invalidated, then the PDF loses the write. It is actually quite easy to invalidate a certificate. For example, performing a not allowed modification to a PDF. A not allowed modification is something that the PDF does not have a write to do. Both Acrobat and Reader do a very good job of protecting the user from doing something they should not do. They do this by turning off any feature that could cause a problem, which means that when you open an extended PDF or a PDF that has rights on it in Acrobat, many of the Acrobat tools will be disabled. They are disabled because if you were to use that tool on the PDF, you would invalidate the right. Rights have to be the last thing that is added to the PDF before it is distributed. You can't make any modifications to the PDF after that point other than the ones enabled by the write or the extension. Non-Adobe tools or third-party tools are not so kind. Many non-Adobe tools will destroy reader rights. This is a big problem when distributing rights extended documents. And another big problem with reader rights is they are not always compatible between versions of Acrobat. But fortunately, reader rights are no longer important for most applications. With Acrobat 11, we don't really have to care about reader rights as much as we used to. That is, of course, unless your company is stuck with Reader 10 or earlier. So, if you're using Reader 10 or earlier, you have to care about rights. If you're using Reader 11 or later, you don't have to worry about it as much. However, in most cases, you won't know what version of Reader your form is being used on. So, it's a good idea to know how to apply reader rights if you think you'll need it. The important rights, for us, are of course the form fill and save rights. These rights can be applied in Adobe Acrobat Professional version 8 through version 11, or in Acrobat Standard versions 9 through 11. Standard is limited to only applying form rights, whereas Acrobat Professional also applies commenting and signing rights. All the other rights require that expensive server that I mentioned earlier. You're viewing this presentation in Acrobat 11 Professional. In this version and in Acrobat version 10, reader rights or reader extensions are applied from the file Save As menu. For extending forms, you want to use this last option. Remember, 
both Acrobat 10 and Acrobat 11 apply reader writes or extensions from the Save As menu. In Acrobat 8 and 9, it's done very differently. Here's Acrobat 9 standard. For both Acrobat 8 and Acrobat 9, the form rights are an option on the Advanced menu. When I select this option, Acrobat pops up an alert message informing me of the rights that will be applied, and then displays the Save As dialog. And that is all there is to applying reader rights or extensions to a PDF form. To understand this better, let's take a look at the history of reader extensions. Now, back in the old days, reader was just a PDF viewer. You couldn't do much with it, but read. To make reader more useful for Adobe's high-end customers, they created the concept of rights in Acrobat 5 back in 1999. But the only way to add a write to a PDF was with a very expensive server application. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. There was a whole range of functionality that we knew about because it was listed in the Acrobat reference, but it was completely off limits. We couldn't do anything with it because it required these special rights that needed this very expensive server to unlock. That is, until Acrobat 7, when Adobe added the ability to apply commenting rights to a PDF in Acrobat Professional. That was only one right, but it was one thing that we could now do that we could never have done before, which was add comments to a PDF in Adobe Reader. Adobe expanded on this idea in Acrobat 8 by adding form filling and signing rights. This was really big news. It was the first time that mere mortals like us could actually save and fill forms in Reader. You might well ask, why would Adobe give up so much that they had held on to so tightly for so long? And the answer is third-party viewers. Other companies were starting to take a big chunk out of the Acrobat pie by creating cheaper products just for form filling and commenting. To take this a step further, they gave Reader 10 the ability to add notes and highlights and wet signatures to the PDF without any rights at all. This was really giving away something for free. A wet signature is a written or drawn signature. It's really just a type of drawing markup on the PDF. I'm not talking about the digital certificate kind of signature. But still, these were big things that Adobe was starting to give away. And you can kind of see where this is going, which is Reader 11. In Reader 11, Adobe lifted several of the restrictions for the most popular features. No rights are needed at all for any kind of commenting or markup, or for filling and saving forms, or for wet signatures, or for page templates. They gave up every single one of these features that was previously restricted for free. No rights needed at all. A page template is one that's really exciting. Page templates are the Acroform version of a dynamic form. Page templates have been around for a long time, but most users have never seen them. They've never even known they existed. The reason Adobe added this feature to Reader is because they are trying to move users away from lifecycle forms, which, if you watched the previous video, you'd know that lifecycle forms are Adobe's dynamic forms technology, which is no longer available as a default in Acrobat 11. We'll never see the level of dynamic features that are provided by a lifecycle form in regular PDF forms, but at least we do have page templates. You'll need to be a member to watch the videos to see how page templates work. Let's take a quick look at Adobe Reader 11. You're now looking at the exact same slide presentation, but in Adobe Reader. And like Acrobat, all the main tools are arranged in these four panels on the right-hand side but the tools in Reader 11 are very different than the same panels in Acrobat 11. The Tools pane, for example, accesses online services. These are features that are not built into Reader. The Sign pane provides tools for applying a wet signature. Notice that the Digital Certificate tools are all grayed out. This is because the Digital Signature feature still requires a write or a Reader extension. This is not one of the things that Adobe has given away for free. The comment panel contains all of the comment and markup tools, exactly the same ones that you get in Acrobat Professional. So you can now use these tools unrestricted in the free reader. This last panel extended is one that you probably won't see in your own reader. It contains the JavaScript automation tools or macros. In this case, these are tools that I've created. And of course, there are a number of tools that are still restricted. 
As you just saw, the digital signature tools were all disabled. Fortunately, the digital signature right is one that you can apply with Acrobat Professional. But another feature that is still restricted is adding file attachments to a PDF. Of course, you can add file attachments in either Acrobat Standard or Acrobat Professional, but the only way to do it in Reader is to apply the Attachments Reader extension, which can only be done with the expensive server I mentioned earlier. And now you know everything there is to know about the differences between Acrobat and Adobe Reader. Of course, Acrobat and Reader are not the only PDF tools in town. PDF is an open standard, so there is an entire ecosystem of third-party tools built around it, including tools in the new mobile platforms of iPhones, iPads, and Android devices, which is the subject of the next video.